Well, hey everybody, welcome to Celebrate Recovery. My name is Johnny. I'm a believer who struggles with alcoholism and codependency. We are so glad you're here with us tonight. We're gonna to talk about principle three. Principle three says, consciously choose to commit all my life and will to Christ's care and control. Matthew 5.5 5 says, happy are the meek. And step three says, we made a decision to turn our lives, our wills over to the care of God. Romans 12 once says, therefore, I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. So once we've gotten to principle three, we've worked with God's help, the first two principles to the best of our ability. We admitted our lives were out of control and unmanageable and we came to believe that God could restore us. But even after taking the first two steps, we can be stuck in this cycle of failure that keeps us bound by guilt, fear, and depression. So tonight we're gonna to look at how we can get unstuck. How do we get past those old familiar negative barriers of pride and fear, guilt and worry and doubt? Those barriers that keep us from taking this step. Well, the, action, the answer is action. Principle three is all about action. It states, we choose to commit. Making a choice requires action. Now, almost everybody knows the difference between right and wrong, but most people don't like making decisions. We just follow the crowd because it's easier. It's easier than making the decision to do the thing, the right thing that we know we should do. Or we procrastinate making commitments that will allow us to change, to allow the change that we need from our past hurts, hangups, and habits. Now think about action for a, for a minute. When I think about action, I think about action movies. Like most guys, I love action movies. I, I love them. I like a movie where something blows up, where there's car chases, where there's a plot that could never happen in real life, where a guy does something that's just amazing. I love it. I, I love those movies. My favorite movies are the Star Wars movies. I'll admit it. And uh, I grew up going to see those movies. And I remember one time after seeing Empire Strikes Back for the sixth or seventh time in the movie theater, I looked at my mom and I said, you know, mom, when I grow up, I want to be... Darth Vader, which is, I'm sure, what every mom really wants to hear. But I love these action movies because there's heroes, the, the rebels, right? They're, they're having to take actions to accomplish their goal. They don't just sit by and wait for the empire to crumble. No, they go after it. Now, imagine if there wasn't any action in an action movie. If a hero sat around going, well, should I do anything? I mean, should I act on this? Should I go out and do what I'm supposed, should I try to save the world? Or what about those people in that burning building? Maybe I should just let it burn. What if, what if he didn't make a choice, just procrastinated, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a good movie. Two hours of that? No, thank you. I, I don't wanna see that. And think about how irritating it is to sit around the group of people who are trying to decide what to have for dinner. That happened for some of you coming in or it's gonna happen for some of you going out tonight. You, you'll talk about what you wanna do and we've all had that conversation. You'll say, well, where do you wanna eat? And somebody will say, I, I don't care. Where do you wanna eat? So then you make a, a, a suggestion. You say, how about pizza? And they go, no, I don't want pizza. How about tacos? No, and it goes on and on and on. It, it gets really bad when no one wants to make a decision. You're never going to eat. But did you know that for us in recovery to decide not to decide is to decide? Or to never make a decision is to make a decision? Now, here's what we're gonna talk about tonight. We're gonna talk about the action we need to take to get unstuck, to help us keep moving on our road to recovery. And that action is to trust Jesus Christ. If you haven't made the decision to accept Jesus Christ, you have made the decision not to accept him. In the book of Revelation, chapter three, verse 20, Jesus says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Principle three is opening the door. All you need is the willingness to make the decision. Christ will do the rest. So let's look at our acrostic for tonight. The first letter in action is A, and that stands for accept Jesus Christ as your higher power and savior. We need to make the once in a lifetime decision to ask Jesus Christ to come into our lives and to help us in our struggles. We make the decision to establish a personal relationship with Jesus that he so desires for us. Now is the time to commit to this decision. God is saying, do it today. Satan is saying, put it off until tomorrow. You know, we wanna make this hard. We wanna look at Jesus and we wanna think there's no way he could ever love me. We come up with all kinds of ways to make it harder. In fact, some would say that that's what the word religion means. To me, religion is trying to work for God's approval. 
but we're told it's so much easier. In Romans 10, 9, God's word tells us that if you declare with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's it. Look at that verse again. All we need to do is believe that Jesus is the one and only higher power, that he is Lord, and we'll be saved. It's only after you make this decision that we can do the C in our acrostic, and that's to commit to start following God's will. We commit to following God's will. I would venture that all of us from time to time have tried to run our lives on our own power and found it to be less than successful. In principle three, we change our definition of willpower. Willpower becomes the willingness to accept God's power to guide our lives. We come to see that there's no room for God if we're full of ourselves. Now, I'm a bit of a gadget guy. I like computers and little gadgets. I, my, I love my smartphone. I carry it with me everywhere. I use it all the time. And uh, it's got a pretty good battery. I can use my battery for a while and uh, I can do a lot of stuff with it, but eventually that battery is gonna run out. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to plug it into its power source. Well, we're the same way. On our own power, we might be able to run our lives for a short amount of time. We might be able to do some things for a while, but sooner or later, we're going to run out. We're gonna to need to plug into the power source, and that power source is Jesus Christ. Following him and committing to following his will provides us the power we need in order to find lasting recovery. We need to pray the prayer uh, that the psalmist prayed when he said in Psalm 143.10, teach me to do your will for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. The next letter in action is the T, and that stands for turn it over. You've heard this a lot in recovery, I'm sure. Let go and let God. It doesn't, that doesn't mean let go of some things, let go of certain things, let go of the things you're ready to get rid of. It means let go of everything. We turn it all over to God. Proverbs 3, 6 tells us in everything you do, put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success in everything you do. Not just the big things, not just the little things, everything. See, Jesus doesn't just want a relationship with part of you. He wants a relationship with all of you. So what burdens are you carrying, on, carrying with you tonight that you just haven't turned over to Jesus? Are you holding on to something that you've said, Jesus, you've helped me with this in the past. You've shown yourself to be faithful, but I'm gonna hold on to this one. I'm not gonna give this to you. This one is either too big for you or I'm not really ready to get rid of it yet. See, when we carry our burdens, we're weighed down to them. But look at what Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. He says, come to me and I will give you rest. All of you who work so hard beneath a heavy yoke, wear my yoke for it fits perfectly. And let me teach you, for I am gentle and humble and you shall find rest for your souls. For I give you only light burdens. The next letter in action is I, and it stands for it's only the beginning. In the third principle, we make the initial decision to accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior. Then we can make the commitment to seek and follow God's will. And the new life that begins with this decision is followed by a lifetime process of growing as a Christian. Philippians 1, 6 puts it this way. God who began the good work within you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until his task within you is finally finished. I like to compare the third principle to buying a new house. Now, before I go forward, I know some of you, if you're like me, the thought of buying a house brings up acid reflux, but just hold on a second. When, when you decide to buy a new house, you just don't find the house you want, kick the door in, plant a flag and say, this is my house and just start moving your stuff in. No, first you have to make the decision to buy a new house, but that's only the beginning. There's a lot of more steps you need to take before you actually can move into the house. You have to go to the bank and apply for the loan. You have to find the house. You have to find a person to help you with the house. You need to get an appraisal. You have to complete escrow. You have to find a moving company and on and on and on, all before you're ready to move in. Now, recovery is not a three principle program. We're only at principle three and it's an exciting beginning of a new life. But we have to live that life out the way we do in our acrostic is the O one day at a time. The O in our, our action stands for one day at a time. That's how we live our lives. We live it out one day at a time. We need to be careful that we don't get stuck in yesterday or constantly worry about tomorrow because when we do that, we waste the precious time of the present. And it's only in the present that God can change us and that our growth can occur. We can't change yesterday and we can only pray about tomorrow. And Jesus gave us instructions for living this kind of philosophy. In Matthew 6, 34, he said, don't be anxious about tomorrow. 
God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. Believe me, if I could go back to my past and change some of the bad decisions I made, there's a lot of things I would do differently. I would choose to go back and change the, the pain I put my family through. I would, I would choose to do things different and, and not act out in my sin addiction to alcohol, but I can't. I, I can't do that. And on the other side of the coin, coin, if I live too far from the future, if I'm always worried about this or that, will this happen, will that happen? I, I get spun up and I can't control what's going to happen there anyway. And neither can you. All we can do is leave that up to God. So here's what I can do. I can live in today. And I can, with Christ's help, make a difference in the way I live today. And so can you. You can make this decision to live one day at a time. And that finally brings us to the last letter in our cross stick, and that's the N, and it stands for next steps. The next step is to ask Jesus Christ in your life to be your higher power. How? It's really simple. In a minute, we're gonna pray together. Now, maybe you've done this in the past. Maybe you've already accepted Jesus Christ, and your next step may be to recommit your life to him. It could be that you've committed your life to Jesus, but you haven't yet decided that this recovery thing is for you. So your next step may be to getting into this process of recovery. Maybe you're here tonight for someone else and God's saying, no, actually you need this as well. Maybe that's your next step. So we're gonna take a second, we're gonna pray together. And when we do, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a chance to either accept Jesus Christ for the first time. And if you've already done that, just recommit your life to him during this time. And if you've done that and you're ready to start your commitment to recovery, you can pray along with us. So here's what we're gonna do. If everyone would just close their eyes and bow their heads, we're all gonna silently pray together. And if you're ready to make this next step, just say, Jesus, I'm ready. I'm ready to turn my life over to you. I'm ready to take the action that will change me. Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died and you rose again and you want to give me the power to overcome my hurts, hangups and habits. I don't understand it all, but I'm ready to start. Please come into my life and make me new. It's your name we pray, amen.